Channel 5 Memphis. As you will see shortly, during the taping of the Jack Parr program earlier this evening, Jack Parr walked off the show in protest against the deletion of one of his stories from last night's show. In the exercise of its proper responsibility to the public, NBC deleted this material last night because it considered it to be in bad taste. It is NBC's hope that Jack Parr will reconsider his action and return to the program. Thank you very much. Good evening. You stay tuned now for five minutes of the latest news at any moment. <laughs> NBC brings you another program with Uncle Jack and some bedtime stories. I want to read this to you. This is a little... This, this, this makes me laugh, so... Advertisement in a Los Angeles newspaper for sale. Used TV set. Perfect condition. Owner was little old lady who watched only Lawrence Welk. <laughs> That's a buy for somebody. And I wanted to show you this before I do something else. This is... Someone sent this to me. Irene Hayes, flower shop. Well, take us home for Rand. You, oh, I, I, I was winding your roses. What do you, where do you wind it? Where do you wind it? I was winding the roses. Oh. There must be something you wind. Oh, gee, isn't Probably that stupid? Not dumb of me. Oh, oh the whole top, pal. Okay. Now what? I never saw it. The, the, the little people kiss. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Nobody that's, kissed, did they? That's right, because that's a girl and a girl. But when they oh, get that's better. Let's have that, yeah, that's how, that's how the blast done. Let's keep everything straight from now on, you know. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go there, a good smackaroo. There we go. Come on, sweetie, kiss him. <laughs> Look at this one. Look at that one. You know I guess a little magnets in the mouth, huh? Yeah, but the magnets, the polarity of the magnet is such that when a boy meets a boy or a girl meets a girl, the the poles are similar, which repel instead of attract. And the opposite is the case of the <laughs> You do try and be helpful. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Uh, last night on this program, if you would read uh, some of the newspapers, you'd think that I had committed a terrible obscenity. Last night, I told a little story that I thought was about as funny as anything I had ever been given. It was a story... I'm not going to go into it because they'll cut me off again. <laughs> but it is not at all, in any sense of the word, an obscene story. True, the story perhaps should not be told at like at 8 o'clock on Sunday night. But at this hour, uh, it certainly could be told. It was very adult and very funny. 300 people in this audience laughed like they haven't laughed perhaps in some time. Of course, that's no excuse, is it? But then I said, was it all right? I, you know... Did anyone, was anyone offended? It wasn't one voice, and frequently there are voices that are surprised. This was cut out of the show last night, and I cannot understand why. Cutting it out is the right of NBC to do, but not so, in some way telling you the content of it leaves a terrible impressions, uh, impression in your mind. For instance, I'll tell you now where I got the story was given to me by an uncle. His niece, about 13 or 14 years old, brought it home from junior high school where it was read to her by her teacher. And the kids so liked it that the teacher had it copied to send home to, with each kid. That's the very same story that I, that I told you last night. Um, I generally am opposed to obscene stories, dirty stories on this show or anywhere. It doesn't mean that when you ad-lib, that when fast minds are thinking, 
double entendres and triple entendres don't occur. It is not my policy ever. Every comedian that comes on the show with a routine, I don't have time, but the producers see, and I hear jokes that are questionable. They're always out. This show has never brought you girls in the, mainly with low-cut dresses. We don't want it around here. The previous shows before The Tonight Show did nothing but that. You saw a rear end wiggling or a low-cut dress night after night. I am opposed to it because uh, it's, 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 it's nicer, I think, to wear a frock, a dress like the people who would watch would be wearing. I don't mean a nightgown, but I mean the dress that, like, like you might wear. <laughs> like you might wear. You know that, so if you've watched the show, there have been some exceptions. Now, do I thrive on controversy? I do not. I have turned down on this show so many people who are controversial or in delicate taste. I could get a big, bigger rating than we have now if I wanted to go in for that. I don't want to. You can't have it two ways. You can't sell products. You can't have people like you and at the same time use them and bring on people of, with delicate problems like, may I tell you, Christine Jorgensen has tried to get on the show. No. Other people with other problems. Why mention them? Their problems are enough. I don't want that kind of thing on the show. I want fun, some information, and uh, that's about all I have to say about th uh, that at the moment. Now, uh, NBC is a little confused as to which clown cut that out of the show last night. They're not quite sure who did it. Those who saw it today, some people said they were quite surprised, and the whole thing has gotten out of hand. But the damage has been done. Not only to their property, this show, The Tonight Show, which they own, I do not, but to me personally. And so my solution, I've been up for about 30 hours without an ounce of sleep. That's not your problem. But I have been. And, uh, don't worry. <laughs> what, what was I talking about? <clears throat> Help me. Just what, tell me what I was talking about. You said that NBC was... Oh, yeah. Here, so I went to them. <laughs> I'm loaded with ammunition, but, you know, I, I don't get it out straight. So I went to them. And uh, I said, well, you know, the least you could do, maybe ask, get permission, or give me a no. Could I show that tape again? Let me show that one hunk that's caused all this comment in the press, because there's so many guys, uh, in a way, you know, out to zing me, that this is the way to stop it. Show, show what we did. And uh, they thought about it and said, pass it off with a joke, lightly. Well, I cannot pass it off with a joke and will not. I uh, have been wrestling with my conscience all day. I have been attacked and will be attacked time. It's going to go on forever now. You might as well know it with, by the Hearst people, the Hearst press. And it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Because <laughs> it starts in the television columns and then it spreads to the Dorothy Kilgallen column. <laughs> and I finally, on the editorial page, you know, what, what's left for me? You know, Westbrook Pegler or the comics? You know, I don't know where to go from there. And so this is how it's going to be. I am opposed to purposely plotted risque material. I am more vehemently opposed to yellow journalism. Now, when you take a moral stand in your television column or on your front page and your editorial page and speak how moral you are and how religious your paper is, why then in heaven's name do you have your front page full of the Finch murder trial with red headlines this big, banners on all the trucks where all the kids can see it. And in these articles, going into the most, I think, obscene and personal matters that just don't belong on the front page of a reputable newspaper. Uh, I have talked about that kind of thing, and when I talked about it, I knew full well what my future was going to be. That's the way it has to be with me. Now, I've made a decision about what I'm going to do. And... Uh, only one person knows about this. It's Hugh Downs. My wife doesn't know it, but I'll be home in time and I'll tell her. I'm leaving the Tonight Show. There must be a better way of uh, making a living than this. There's a way of entertaining people without being constantly involved in some form of controversy, which is on me all the time. It's rough on my wife and child, and I don't need it. I like the National Broadcasting Company. They've been uh, 
swell to me. And I'd been pretty wonderful to them. I took over a show with 60 stations. There's now 158. The show is sold out. It's the highest, I think, uh, money producer for this network. And I believe I was let down by this network at a time when I could have used their help. You have been peachy to me always. Jack, I... You know what I said about here. Uh, I told Jack when he first mentioned to me what he intended to do, that I wished he wouldn't do it, that he uh, frequently does things he regrets, that this might be one of them. It's my hope that this isn't final. One thing, I, one thing we can say about Jack, he does things hastily at times that he does not hold on to grudges that might seem like permanent lifetime things and that are with many people have proved not to be with Jack. That was the case with Dodie Goodman. Much publicized quarrels which may have been blown out of proportion as in the case of Jack Douglas who is still a very good friend of Jack's. Um, he meant what he said about NBC and his friendliness with it and his respect for it. I like to think that that respect might still be there and might still be mutual. Uh, that this is a surface thing. I do want to say that I don't think that this is... I, I know that this is not any planned thing on his part. God knows I'd like to be any place but here right now. Uh, it was no... He, he did not do this for effect. I like to think that it is not final and he'll be back. He did not plan this with an eye to having you applaud so that he would be brought back. That is not in his mind. I hope it can be put in his mind to come back to this show because he built it. Uh, the things that have been good about it, as well as the things that have been criticized, and much of it unjustly, I, I have had to say, have had to agree with him about things that have come up in the press and his right to defend principles that he believes against uh, press, certain press treatment. I have urged and hoped that he would uh, not allow retaliation to enter into it because he does tend to feel that he is personally attacked in areas where it is only a principle that's being attacked. And he has a right to fight for a principle. He actually has a right to fight for himself, too. Uh, I had a long talk with him before. I was unable to dissuade him from uh, doing this. And now I am alone. Did, is, he, is he gone? Yes. Uh, there are guests on the show. Jack was, uh, he was thoughtful enough to ask me. Uh, Shelley Berman is with us tonight. And uh, there's a show business tradition. It must go on. Somebody once said why, but I think uh, we know the, the answer. Uh, it should. We, Shelley Berman is here, and Jack said to me that uh, he didn't... He, the worst thing he felt about it was that Shelley Berman has a, a presentation that Jack had wanted to make to him in connection with the fantastic sales of Shelley's last record. And uh, so he gave me the information on it, and uh, at that time I still thought he might not go through with it. But we're going to introduce our guests. We're going to have, I guess, our customary component of commercials. They'll be a little unusual because I won't be back there with the products, perhaps. But uh, if you bear with us, we'll go on with the show. And I think I was I was glad that you felt as you did. I'd like to see I'd like to see him come back to the show. I think he should. I don't think he should have gone. I told him that. I wish he could shrug it off. Let's do a commercial and bring our guests out. <laughs> Friday night begins with comedy on NBC and Channel 5 at 6.30 with Art Linkletter and People Are Funny. Adventure follows at 7 o'clock with a gripping episode of The Troubleshooters. Music is in the spotlight at 7.30 when the telephone hour comes to you in color. 
Gypsy, Carl Sandberg as special guest, along with Julie Andrews, Earl Wrightson, Brian Sullivan, and the lovely Nanette Fabre, who will give the musical history of the past 75 years. A change of pace at 8.30 brings you Masquerade Party with Jane Meadows, Lee Bowman, Sam Levinson, Audrey Meadows, and Burt Parks. An exciting sports presentation on Channel 5 is set for 9 o'clock tomorrow night when you'll see the climax of the 1960 Golden Gloves Tournament telecast live by Channel 5 from Ellis Auditorium with Jack Eaton as your sportscaster. For the tops in Friday night television, watch Channel 5, outstanding in Memphis. I think we might uh, might call on our guests here. I know. I, I think. I think what I'd like to do, if she is nearby, uh, a person that has been on this program for a long time. I feel like I'd like to have her out here right now. Will you welcome Genevieve? <laughs> And all we have to do is to try to make the, the best show we never did. Because, you know, Jacques, he, he, was, he was really uh, crying, but he was really sick, even during, before the show. And now we, we are going to try to, to do our best, because, you know, you know, Jacques, I'm sure he did horror comes and now, now he regrets, I'm sure. He's already gone, but all we I are going to do... I, 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 I don't <gasps> think he regrets the decision. He does feel hurt. I think that, uh, I hope that he will... Uh, in time, be able to to shrug it off and come back because whether uh, you know, there's a lot that can be said about it. I frequently sit here and make my comments in a voice amplified 30 million times, and it's a it's a rare and weighty privilege to do this. Uh, I'm not always right, but I, I have feelings that parallel Jacks in the matter of censorship. I would rather not see censorship. At the same time, it was uh, the particular thing in question was a piece of material that. Uh, I personally would not have used, but that's a, that's a fatuous thing to say. That's a matter of personal taste. Certainly he is right that, what, uh, that many things sure. on this program have been, have been uh, of a much worse nature. And, uh, and darling, anyhow, he's hurt, you know, and the fact he's hurt. He is at this time, that's right. He is terribly, terribly hurt. Well, I think we'll carry on. Well, let's just try to keep the show intact and not bend it in the hope that he'll come back to it. Yeah, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will, because we love him so much all. How are you now? Huh? How are Me, you? I'm good, darling. You're getting I, better every day. Yes, right? yes. I'm living for, uh, for Haiti. Uh, You're in Haiti? Jose, yes. You know yeah, why? You because, monsieur, here? you know why? Because, monsieur Bonami, you know, they send me check every, every week. Mm -hmm. They are very nice. And they have beautiful hotel there. And uh, they, they invite me there to spend a few weeks. For relax. And, you know, and relax and relax. Yeah, uh, yes. That's good. You know what I think? I think they, they don't want to send me uh, any more check because when I will be good, I will not need well, money, they, you know? They didn't make it a lifetime thing, <laughs> no. I guess, did they? I see we might have a song here. Yes, <laughs> one song from Paris. Jacques Lowe. I'll tell you song. what, maybe I should, in view of the time, would you uh, mind if I... Maybe I, I can sit right thing. here and there's another uh, commercial message. The commercials seem to be coming twice as fast tonight. I don't know why. It just seems that way. But I want to talk about... Your child may be passing his tests, but flunking his future. Look, this schoolroom could be your son's or daughter's. Looks good, doesn't it? Not crowded. Kids seem busy enough. Perhaps they're even getting good grades. Not a thing to worry about then. Or is there? There is, if the standard for those grades is not high enough. Then your youngster may be passing his tests, but flunking his future. What can you do about it? Read this free booklet, Yardsticks for Public Schools. It tells how to measure your school standard in courses, in teacher qualifications, in facilities. Help raise that standard if necessary before it's too late. Write today for your free copy of Yardsticks, Care of Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York, 16 New York.
un amour fleuri, ça fait pendant des semaines. Des cœurs qui sourient, tout ça parce qu'ils s'aiment. À Paris, au printemps, sur les toits, les girouettes, on ne fait les coquettes avec le premier vent qui passe un différent nom chalant. À Paris, n'a plus qu'un seul souci, c'est d'aller musarder dans tous les beaux quartiers de Paris. Les salaires qui est son vieux copain est aussi de la fête, et comme deux collégiens, ils s'en vont dans le guet dans Paris. Et la main dans la main, ils vont sans se presser, regardant ton chemin si Paris a changé. Il y a toujours des taxis en marron qui vous chargent en pôle avant le stationnement où il y a encore l'agent des taxis. Au café, on voit n'importe qui qui voit n'importe quoi qui parle avec ses mains qui est là le matin. Au café, il y a la scène à n'importe quelle heure. Elle a ses visiteurs qui la regardent dans les yeux, ce sont ses amoureux. À la et il y a ceux, ceux qui ont fait leur lit près du lit de la scène et qui se lavent à midi tous les jours de la semaine dans la scène. Depuis qu'à Paris on a pris la Bastille, dans tous les faubourgs et à chaque carrefour, il y a les gars et il y a les filles qui sur les pavés sans arrêt les jours sont les jours et nous à Paris. Tonight I visit Cherry Lewis and Bridget Monroe. The second visit on my own time will not be televised. <laughs> yes. Hello, Cherry. Hello, Mr. Collingworth. May I call you Charles? No. Now you're known for your very fine taste, Miss Lewis. Why didn't you use it here? Oh, I haven't finished decorating. I thought I'd put some pieces of furniture of Louis the Fourteenth about over here. What do you think? That's strictly between you and Louis. What's in that box? Some old bills and receipts. Save all your bills? Most of them. Might be able to use one to support a deduction on my income tax. <coughs> Good idea. Don't you think you ought to put out that cigarette? What cigarette? I don't smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, the studio's on fire. Help! Your local certified public accountants and the Internal Revenue Service suggest saving all bills and receipts that might help support deductions on your federal income tax. <coughs> Channel 5's bright new daytime entertainment, look for Life of Riley, the Ready Young Theater, Comedy Playhouse, and Adventure Time. Bill Bendix is back at 12.30 weekdays, living the life of Riley. Join him tomorrow. And then at 1.30, look in on the sparkling drama at the Loretta Young Theater. Another of the shows that gives daytime televiewing on Channel 5 a nighttime look. For madcap mystery and suspense, spiked with laughter, see tomorrow's Thin Man story at the, the Comedy Playhouse, starring Phyllis Kirk and Peter Lawford at 3 o'clock. And then stay tuned for High Key Adventure in the Old South with undercover agent Yancey Derringer. A gripping story full of rousing action at 3.30, Adventure Time on Channel 5. For daytime television with a nighttime look, look to Channel 5, outstanding in Memphis. Today, your family car is a convenience. But in the event of a national emergency... could be a necessity. It will help you move away from the danger. It will provide you with vital information and instructions through its radio. It will store a supply of food, water, and clothing for your family. 
To be ready for any emergency, keep it in good working order. Keep the battery in tip-top shape and the tires. And keep the gas tank at least half full at all times. Take good care of your car or in an emergency. It may be your principal means of survival. You know, a curious thing, uh, while we're on the uh, subject, I'm going to make the assumption right now that nobody tuned in late. Maybe I shouldn't do that. There might be some who, who did. Uh, Jack has actually left, I hear. He went down in the elevator. And uh, with the announcement that he was that he was going to quit the show, it's our hope, and it was the hope of everyone here in the studio audience that that is not a an unrescindable decision, and that he might uh, uh, that he would reverse it and come back to the show as soon as possible. One of the things that he had taken such pride in, and that we all had, was the fact that the uh, the network up to now we've been doing this on what we call live tape, and uh, that has confused many people. It, it confused the press, which. Uh, hadn't, in most instances, done much to clarify exactly what live tape meant. It was, in one instance, called double think, that it was a meaningless phrase, and it isn't a meaningless phrase. When you watch on Friday nights and you see the best of par, uh, you see, you see a, a repeat of something that happened some time ago, in some cases perhaps edited to make the time come out right. That's a different thing. That's like making a movie, in a way, except it's tape instead of motion pictures. But the live tape shows, and NBC has many of them, are exactly what they say they are. They are live and unedited, and they are played in front of an audience, uh, and then rolled, maybe in this case, three hours later, exactly as they went. And things have been said that have been accidental, that may have, uh, may have caused litigation. There have been lawsuits that have occurred uh, as a result of them. But it was always NBC's decision, to, in order to keep the flavor of a live show, to let it roll exactly as it was. And there was a great deal of pride in their doing that. In fact, the only two words that Jack told you recently that have been edited out were the words Diana Barrymore, because uh, Diana had passed away, and there was a, a ribald reference to her, or an un improper reference, and those two words were taken out uh, in order to, uh, which was a proper thing to do, which Jack sanctioned and wanted. It was sad that this happened last night, because it kind of spoiled a record that uh, NBC had up to this point. We're going to bring other guests out in a moment, and we'll have a little more to say about it. We'll see you. Guess the celebrity on Masquerade Party in color Friday. Robert Livingston Barlow, 29, popular, good job, going places. Where's he going now? Minutes ago, Robert Barlow was in his own car. Ahead, a chance to get home early for once. And... on insured savings at the Home of Savings, Home Federal Savings, Home Federal Building, 2nd at Jefferson, Memphis. Channel 5, Memphis. During the taping of the Jack Parr program earlier this evening, Jack Parr walked off the show in protest against the deletion of one of his stories from last night's show. In the exercise of its proper responsibility to the public, NBC deleted this material last night because it considered it to be in bad taste. It is NBC's hope that Jack Parr will reconsider his action and return to the program. I'd like, this, I'd like to join you for the first thing, uh, Genevieve, mm -hmm. and I would like then to call out two friends of this show, two friends of Jack, who happen to be on tonight. They were booked a long time ago. 
And they are here, and I'd like to bring them both out together. If that's not a disservice to them, they're wonderful guys, and they've both been a great credit to this program. And uh, I'll just intone their names because they don't need any big buildup. They're good guys. Orson Bean and Shelley Berman. Here? You, you want to uh, see No, no, right where we are. I think we can uh, pick everybody up here. This is ridiculous. It's kind of an unusual night. Well, I, I said, like, you know, that Daddy isn't in his chair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel kind of lost. Uh, I have something uh, that Jack wanted me to, to give to you later that was a presentation that had been given to him. I don't know. I hope I'm not blowing it, whether you know about it or not. It, it has to do with your recording. And I'll bring it out a little later in the evening. All right. Start with you. Yeah, I got a pretty good idea what it is, but boy, I sure like to get it. Well, I'll see what yeah. you do. I'll see what you do. In Morrison. front of this mass audience here. I don't think it's a subject that we're going to just drop lightly. And uh, uh, well, I, I, I uh, I'm do you very have something to say. I'm very moved by it. I'm very touched. I'm very upset. And uh, I don't know exactly what I feel, but it's uh, it becomes rarer and rarer in this day and age, particularly in this business, to find somebody who is capable of feeling anything. And I think that the reason for Parr's success, uh, talent can be discussed from now till doomsday, he is able to feel as a human being, and it's fascinating. And here he has come at loggerheads with a mass institution, which is no better and no worse than the other multi-million dollar institutions. They are all dehumanized, and NB NBC is just as dehumanized as any of them. They have no loyalty. they're going to run this or not. <laughs> <laughs> they probably no, won't because uh, uh, they don't have any loyalty and on top of that they don't have any guts. No. If, uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if there was a guy around taking names of cameramen that were applauding? <laughs> No. You'd have to take them all. <laughs> Let me just interpolate one thing, Orson, uh, in line with what you say. A long time ago, I have to agree with you that a long time ago, I shifted my loyalty to individuals. No oh boy, yeah. And individuals can make a, a great corporation. But well, there is a tendency for corporations to become a little soulless. Well, this, I, this, man, this man is capable of being hurt. Uh, that's why he's capable... Well, he's capable of feeling, and he's capable of being hurt, and NBC has hurt him very badly, and he's gone, and... I don't think he will be back. And if he, oh, if he doesn't, maybe. well, I, he may be, he'll be back on some show, but I won't be a bit surprised if he doesn't come back here because if a man decides to feel in life, he, he expects to get hurt. But here, this, this big company that runs this show, they could have come to him and they could have said, we don't like this you're doing, we don't like that you're doing. They could have done a lot of things and they handled it in a rotten way, in a disgusting way. And, I, and to get off the hook by saying, I don't know what clown did it, but laugh it off, that stinks and the whole thing is lousy. It really is. <laughs> Let me say one thing, Orson, and I don't, for heaven's sake, want this to be tainted as sound, sounding like it has any taint of being a company spokesman, because I'm not connected with NBC. I'm not hired by NBC. Congratulations. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was at one time. I haven't been for many years. Uh, it has been characteristic of this show, again, the way Jack built it, that things that have gone on, I have been, uh, well, I'm not the only one, heaven knows, many guests and people have been openly critical of, of NBC's policies, uh, some of them, and have been allowed free speech. One thing, free speech has never been hampered on. I, I would be very surprised if this doesn't go on here. I think it will, really. I think the thing that was, I think the, if the matter of taste has not gone into the matter of freedom of speech, really. 
So that, and, and that is the, one of the greatest things about this show uh, is that people could come on here. I have seen, and you have, uh, Jack, who uh, in, in magazines that have, uh, have maybe uh, been kind to him, in one case, time, and a guest came on to Lilla Bankhead, said she wanted to come on the show, and he said, fine, what do you want to talk about? And she said, I'd like to have, say something about time, and she was pretty hot about something they had said about her that she didn't like. And he said, be my guest. The airwaves are, you know, belong to, to people. And I'm, uh, he has never bottled up an opinion that wasn't parallel to one of his even cherished opinions. So freedom of speech has been something that has been characteristic of the show. Well, because and freedom of speech makes money up to a point. You know, a little controversy makes money. That's why this show has made money, is because here's a man who said whatever he felt like saying, and that's made money. I've well, been, I've been feel like saying an awful lot and haven't had much of a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, I just was being facetious because I was afraid that... I, I'm, I'm afraid of turning the show. Unfortunate. We've had an unfortunate thing happen to it, uh, all of us, but I, I'm, I, we've, you know, I'm afraid of turning this into a, uh, a, a discussion. And, I, you know, there's so many other things that can be done right now to make this a show rather than... Uh, I think Jack covered it so well, Hugh, uh, when he spoke, and uh, I know we sort of share a, a like opinion, but, uh, I, you know... Well, maybe that's not exactly true, Shelley, because uh, a lot of times uh, an important thing happens, like the Van Doren case, and nobody learns anything from it. Like people, a lot of people will say, oh, Parr's a nut, he walked off the show, uh, or NBC shouldn't have done it, or NBC was right, they had their rights, but, but if you don't learn anything from it, and if you don't allow yourself to feel whatever you feel, whether he's right or wrong, then, then it's no point in doing it. No, I, I, of course I agree with you, but uh, I'm just wondering, you know, how long we can uh, do this. Not long, because I have another commercial coming yeah. up. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. But uh, why don't I get that out of the way, and, and then we'll come back. We've got some other uh, topics to cover and so forth. And I don't see... I, actually, though, Shelley, I don't see... Any, uh, it's been characteristic of this show to discuss things that come up, and I, something has come a, up. This is such a... Uh, I, I really... I, well, I, frankly, I just would like to change the subject because I'm too moved to say anything about the subject, and I feel left out. That's all. <laughs> Wait a moment. If you feel tired out or left out, nervous, Ladies and gentlemen, here is a news bulletin from the WMCT newsroom. The woman who jumped from the Memphis, Arkansas bridge tonight has been tentatively identified as Mrs. Kenneth Orgel, Jr., wife of Kenneth W. Orgel, Jr., who made a similar suicide leap from the same bridge 11 days ago. Police said they found a car on the bridge with a wallet in the front seat containing a driver's license issued to Nancy Orgel, and the car was registered in Kenneth Orgel, Jr.'s name. Red Cross and Marine Squad boats have abandoned search tonight. Police say no one saw her jump. This news bulletin from the WMCT newsroom. If you can, come on over here, please, and uh, join the quorum that we have here. And I would like, after, uh, we have a, a really packed house of wonderful people here, and uh, after 12.30, I would like to, uh, I'd like to come up and visit you, as Jack frequently does, and get some opinions up there. First of all, Candy, will you come on, uh, make ready to come in here, and we want to talk a little bit about uh, 
about Valentine's and cars. Men, here is a convincing way to tell her you love her on Valentine's Day. A Schraft's heart. And how would you like uh, her to get a Studebaker lark, too? Well, that can be done. You can give her a chance to own a brand new lark, and it's free. Now, look at this. Schraft's is going to give away 10 of these 1962 door Studebaker larks absolutely free. And all you have to do is visit any store where Schraft's Valentine hearts are sold and look for this display. Take one of these free Schraft's entry cards, simply fill in the entry form that's included there, and have your Valentine's name on it. Tear it off and send it in. That's all you have to do. The winners of the 10 1960 Studebaker Larks will be announced on this program, if this program is on the air, on March 18th. And be sure to choose from the large assortment of Schraft's beautiful Valentine heart, all filled with the same luxurious chocolate, so famous in all Schraft's wonderful gift boxes. Schraff says, I love you on Valentine's Day, so on Valentine's Day, give Schraff. Get your free Schraff Valentine entry blank where you see this sign. You were magnificent. <laughs> Jose? Well, my dear friend, I don't want to put you on the spot. If you if you want to say anything, say it. But uh, don't, that's an awful thing to say. No, that's all right. You've been a friend of Jack's for a long time, I know, and you uh, and you probably know him longer than any of us. Uh, well, I'll be frank with you. I well, you know, I don't talk too much. I just say two words and leave. You know, all the time. And I like to do the same now. But I like to say, no. But I like to say that's uh, using as I said two words. Well, I like to say that there are two words that I like very much, and that I think that goes with Jack Parr, is loyalty and principle. Yes, Jose. And that's about all I can say. I mean, he's been very loyal, very good friend to me. And I hope uh, I'm a new guy. You know, uh, Shelley, <laughs> on, the purely, on the purely selfish angle, I think there are many performers, so many performers, who will lose by Jack's decision tonight. Uh, uh, the chance to appear on this show has, uh, has done so much for my own personal career and uh, I just can't imagine, uh, I, I'm sure that I'm not the only one who has benefited so thoroughly oh, by this wonderful show. Uh, without Jack, let's face it, there is no there one, is no there's show. no Tonight Show there without no tonight Jack, show. And, and I can't imagine what's going to happen. You know, I can't, I can't think of, you know, not being able to come into New York and make a phone call and say, Jack, I'm going to be free next Wednesday. How about it? Yeah. You know? Yes. But maybe he will, maybe he will be back. If they, they, have to, they have to show what, what, the, what the, was the tape. They have to show, they have to be, they have to be honest. They should show to everybody what, what was the tape. And then Jacques will be back. Maybe. Well, that'd be an interesting thing to ask the audience. Hi. Now stick around. We'll be back and then we'll talk to you. Shelley, this is the thing Jack wanted me to, uh, to be sure that you got it, and uh, he gave me the information on it, which I kind of assimilated, because this uh, award is made when somebody sells over 200,000 albums. That's a lot of albums. You know, that's like uh, uh, the equivalent of 12 numbers on it would be like uh, a couple of million uh, single records. They give a gold album, and this is an award. By the time this award was made up to present to Shelley, it had gone from 200,000 to 350,000 copies of Inside Shelley Berman. And this is the gold record, Shelley, from your recording company. a little bit like a coupling for Buddy Bear. <laughs> I'd like to add, if I might, Shelley, that, uh, that uh, the, you may already know it, but the, the new one, Outside Shelley Burn, is on its way to being a record breaker also. So you may get a golden on it, too. Yeah, that's, uh, 
I wonder if these things play. Sure they do. What they do sure they do. You, you, you got to have a gold needle. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm delighted. Uh, they play? Sure no. Play. Yes, it's the same. You can see everything in there. Really, you believe they play? Sure. You can press a record with anything. Oh, and really? This Any material. material. You can press a record out of cardboard. Listen, oh. after the show, I'd like to invite you all up to my place and we'll play the record. <laughs> Be a golden voice. That's good. I'm Thank truly you. delighted. I'm very honored. The record is uh, pretty good. You should <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> That's a nice, refreshing Listen. thing to say instead of saying it's really nothing. No, it's a nice record. Uh, and uh, this is Captain Holbrook. Captain, this is Captain Holbrook. Uh, I just want to welcome you all aboard Flight uh, 314 on stuff to. Uh, uh, you know the best. They don't even know the best. I was on an airplane going to the coast, and the guy came over and said, oh, this guy's a whole <laughs> Talking on a television show that really has pi pioneered in some aspects of democratic uh, outspokenness, which the Jack Parr show uh, has done, and I hope will continue to do, that we would uh, find out something from people if they want to give a little opinion or ask a question that we can answer. Shelley Berman just pointed out that there are three steward I sitting here <laughs> in a row. That's Shelley's plural for stewardesses. Where, where are you girls from? We're all from Minnesota. And uh, Shelley was out in Minnesota last night, and he really had a wonderful reception out there. I think the people at the University of Minnesota and everybody out there, we really love him. Oh, Captain Holbrook, huh? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, he, this record has not only had an effect on his life, but it's had an effect on our lives, too, because it's uh, sort of an icebreaker with a lot of people. People ask you about it and everything, huh? Very good. Uh, we came, I came here, a man has a question. I want to get a few questions, and maybe if somebody has a, an opinion and doesn't uh, wax so vehement that he'll wind up on the cutting room floor, we'll uh, get some opinions, too. What, what did you want to ask, sir? Well, I was wondering, Hugh, uh, Jack has a contract with NBC, and I was wondering what will uh, what'll happen. In other words, he, if he doesn't fulfill a contract, he won't be able to be permitted to uh, appear on another show, will he, until that contract is disposed of one way or the other. That is a good question, and one thing about, about talent contracts, uh, it is one of the things that makes talent talent is that there has to be an emotional atmosphere that is makes working tolerable. And for that reason, uh, that may be one of the reasons that so many clauses are in them that seem tough to the talent, because they would, in effect, lack mutuality if they really could hogtie somebody to doing a show. It's, it's almost the same as your job. In, in a free country, you don't have to do anything. People have said, uh, wh why does Jack Parr take so many vacations? As though he has some uh, duty to the American public to appear every night. Why shouldn't he take as many as he could get? What one of us wouldn't take as many as we could get? Anybody else have a question? Ah. Well, I know, or rather, I hope Jack would come back if, and I know he will, get a deluge of letters and wires for him to come back. Could you possibly give his address, his home address, on the air? That's a good question. I would not, I'll tell you, he would get the letters fast. Don't worry. He'll, he'll get everything that is, uh, is sent to him. But it'll be dispatched much easier and faster if his uh, local post office isn't destroyed by the deluge that would <laughs> happen. I think it'd be better if you write, in, write to NBC. I mean, don't think from what has been said tonight that NBC would impound the mail or anything like that. He will get what's coming. <laughs> Any other? Uh, yes. Just sing it out. I can't get a mic to you. Do you really think that NBC really thinks about Jack Parr the way they do about him? <laughs> I'll repeat that question. And then I'll ask him what it means. Well, it was, if I recall, do you really think that NBC really thinks about Jack Parr the way they really think about him? <laughs> now, I think uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, uh, I, do you have a uh, meaning of that that might be a little... Uh... There was a comment made tonight yeah. that uh, NBC is no good, it stinks. Yeah, it was made out there. I don't think it was said that strongly, but uh, the situation was... Do you really think NBC has anything against Jack Parr for all the lawsuits that are against him? Oh, do, do, do I think that NBC has anything against Jack Parr for lawsuits that may be a result of something that happened on this show? Is that right? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's been a cause of grave concern on the part of the company lawyers. I think that uh, uh, in most cases, the people who sued didn't really have a case. That's a fact. 
Uh, I don't think that that entered into it at all. The value of the show to NBC has always been way, has way outweighed any extra overtime that the lawyers had to put in, I think. I'm not speaking for the lawyers now. They may, they may feel bitter about the situation, but they're good guys, actually. And I ran up here to tell you something and I found myself on camera and I can't get out of here. <laughs> no, stay here. As a matter of fact, having gotten myself in a box here, I don't know what I said about the lawyers then, but uh, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, in answer to your question, sir, I don't think that NBC <laughs> feels, feels bitter toward, toward Jack Parr. Even as of this moment, I think they'll ask him to come back. Yes? So Jack uh, have, uh, announced that this afternoon that they're doing it for effect? Oh, no. Uh, no. It's well established. I think it was pretty well established by the things that were said down here that there's no such thing happening. Jack, I don't think he would do a thing like this. He told me very sincerely that he just felt that he had to leave and he has no intention of coming back. This is one thing that should be understood. People who keep asking, and they still do, what is Jack Parr really like? And there is one thing... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Now we know, There is one thing that... that uh, re I don't know why, if this fails to come across on television, and perhaps it does in a way, or people wouldn't continue to ask, but there is nothing phony about anything Jack has ever done. If he looks elated and happy, he is elated and happy. If he looks depressed and sad, he is depressed and sad. He is not a phony. And that's the thing that maybe people think that he does things occasionally for effect, and I have never known him to do anything for effect. Have you, Shelley? No. I mean, uh, of, uh, no, of course, important no, nature. In, uh, to perform for effect, but, but not in... Not when he's in the air of reality of talking to people and giving his opinion. Well, he's a pretty straight cat. Very, very sincere man. Straight cat. Well, that's there. You've got the musician <laughs> aspect of it. Right? Um, yes, ma'am. May I ask Shelley Berman a question? You sure may. Ohio, and we have this marvelous Beverly Hills Club down there, and I was wondering if he plans on playing it with Cincinnati. Does Shelley Berman plan playing the Beverly Hills Club in Cincinnati? Mimi Heisenfeld Ford, and they paid a packed audience for two weeks. Oh, well, I don't care about Mimi Heisenfeld Ford, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, they're a wonderful act, and I, I'd like to get out there someday, but uh, right now I'm starting on a concert tour, so in the next few days I'll be in Albuquerque and Tucson and Phoenix, so and uh, that, about three or four weeks, and I, I'm, I don't have any bookings coming up for that Cincinnati. I don't think you need to do an act when you get there. I think all you need to do is sit on the stage and answer questions about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, boy, that's uh, grist for the mill, isn't it? Except that it cuts a little close to the bone, doesn't it? It's very... It's nothing that, uh, that one would, would wish to see happen. Any questions down in here? I think we... Yes. Officials of NBC come down to straighten this out, she said. And uh, that's a good question. I think uh, the answer to that is uh, the halls are swarming with them, but you can't, <laughs> you can't keep Jack Parr from going home if he wants to go home. Give him a few minutes. <laughs> you want to read the papers tomorrow. Yes, sir. One more. Well, we haven't seen the core of this controversy. You mean, will this be aired? No. What's this? Oh, he's asked, will, we, will, we, will you ever see the piece of tape that did not go on last night's show? This I do not know. If NBC decided to run it, it would mean that they were saying they were wrong to have cut it out in the first place. Uh, in a way, one might think the public would, should have a right to judge for itself. But if NBC elected to elide this from the tape, they probably uh, did so because they feel that it uh, was not fit material for the air. Now I must do a commercial. Miss Miller? This man says, shouldn't we be the judge of that? There's a question to think about. Uh, let me say something here of a commercial nature. Excuse me, Shelley, I'll be back. Here are two salads that you're going to look at shortly. They're both delicious. If anything, one of them may taste a little bit better than the other, one on the left. But one salad is made with regular dressing and has 60 calories per tablespoon. And this one... Only one. Now, what makes the difference? The difference is Frenchette. Frenchette is the non-fattening salad dressing with a bottle full of flavor, but only one uh, calorie per tablespoon. And only one is almost none, as you know. Frenchette is what we used to think was impossible, a salad dressing with full flavor in and calories out. Light Frenchette never drowns the salad flavor, but brings out the very essence of those crispy, delicate greens. 
and it adds a zesty French touch all its own. So if you want full flavor in and calories out, use Frenchette, the non-fattening salad dressing with the bottle full of flavor, but only one calorie per tablespoon. And if you prefer Italian-style dressing, try low-calorie Italianette for that extra spicy tang. Buy them both, Frenchette and Italianette. It's good. One little uh, thing here. My, I came down here tonight to... Uh, I'll be back and join you in just a minute. I came down here tonight uh, early to get some pictures taken for a thing I'm going to do, another thing I'm going to do for NBC. And Dee Dee came down with me, and I was going to take her home, but in view of the uh, of the event that was brewing and finally occurred, I uh, I kept her with me because I couldn't uh, I couldn't get her home, so she just stayed down for the show, and uh, she caught the general spirit of uh, what was going on and the audience reaction and was in tears. And I came over and asked her why a few minutes ago, and. Uh, she said she was worried. Do you want to tell why you're worried, honey? No. It was just a... Oh, you tell me. Well, she, she, she said... Uh, she, said I, uh, she said, I feel sorry for Mr. Parr. She said, he let me be on the air on Christmas and, and New Year's. And, and she said, he was always nice to me. And, and I don't know why they're doing this to him. So she was sympathetic. But I tried to explain to her that actually he... It was he that made the decision. And uh, he went away. But I appreciate your... Uh, your mood, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot. We'll go back now to where we belong. Well, sir, how do we stand? Uh... <clears throat> Listen, you. Uh, somebody said that the comment was made that NBC stinks. You know, I hope nobody thinks I made that comment. That's I said the, the whole thing stinks. stinks. And what I, the only thing that I think is lousy is the dehumanization element that, that I don't think NBC is any better and any worse than any other major successful multi-million dollar operation of any sort in the yes. whole country. No better and no worse. They're, they're a darn good network. They got Huntley Brinkley, they got Shelley Berman sometimes. They're a good network, but this whole thing, you know, the network doesn't stink as a network. It stinks as, as a human relationship outfit. Like uh, in the way that any big uh, corporation right. does. Can, I mean, when, yeah. See, there you've touched on something. The danger of misunderstanding is so powerful that even in a medium, which, and I think it is the most powerful, even ahead of the press, for which I have a lot of respect, but television with sight and sound is more than twice what radio was. You know, there are many communication channels now open when you can look a, b a person in the eye and, and tell what he's, what he's thinking. Uh, but still, as powerful as television is, there's a terrible danger of misunderstanding. You know, it's just, just like that. Now, that was a well-meaning misunderstanding, yes. but they thought that you had said something you had not said. Yeah. And one time Jack and I sat here, we were talking when Khrushchev was coming over, and w we were talking about whether it was a good thing or not in the long run, and we expressed the fact that, uh, that there were, or the belief that it was a danger that Khrushchev might come over here and, and uh, meet with some harm at the hands of somebody who thought he could solve the world's problems by doing Khrushchev in, and, and uh, I said it would be terrible if he came, was brought over here, invited by our president, and then uh, somebody broke his leg. And it was printed in some, some paper said that Jack Parr had said we ought to bring Khrushchev over here and break his leg. <laughs> That's how far it got out of hand, you know. So there's always the danger of not, of not being understood. Yeah. And I think this may prove to have some bearing on the case of what has just happened. I hope when the misunderstanding is really cleared up that uh, Jack will come back. Oh, I, just hope, I just hope that nobody forgets about the pitchforks. Uh, that, to me, the most important thing is yes. that people, uh, Jack Parr's fans, have to go to bat for him. Uh, Absolutely. I know that this isn't uh, what he is expecting anybody to do. It's not a set-up thing. I know it because I know Jack. Mm -hmm. But I think the only way that he'll ever get him back is to go to bat for him. No. I think the, whether, whether you agree or not with what he did and in leaving and in reading the thing, this is a man that needs other human beings. I don't mean that in a maudlin, sentimental way, but he's a human being, a real one. Who doesn't? Yeah. A lot of people don't think they do, though. Yeah. He knows he does. Well, now, I think we've covered the topic, and we've had uh, uh, We've got a good group out there. It was, it was pleasant to visit them. Are you kind of glad you got your tickets for tonight? <laughs> it was unusual, anyway. You may have touched off whatever it takes to get the ball rolling and write things and, uh, and, and bring you back where you belong. You know, it's a funny thing, and I was saying in, in talking to him before the show, that from a purely selfish standpoint, his presence on this program has been a benefit to so many of us, mm. that had, had this been my program from the beginning, it would not, I would not be as well off as I, as I am 
because he molded it the way he did. You know, this is yes. a thing that is true. Yes. So, well, we're pointing now to another commercial. They seem to come every 30 seconds, but I'm sure more time than that elapses. <laughs> I'll read you exactly what's written. Not just one thing, Jack, several things. Real <laughs> lemon doesn't have seeds to strain out, no messy rinds to dispose of, none of this paraphernalia to clean up. In a word, real lemon lemon juice, hold up bottles. Doesn't have any waste, no wasted time, no wasted effort, no wasted results. You just pour. And you get the juice of about 16 average size lemons in a bottle of real lemon. Another nice thing real lemon has is this uh, handy squeeze. They stole it. I got a squeeze. Here we are. A squeezed lemon. We've shown you many times for the table. Uh, this is the only squeezed lemon that, st that sits flat. It won't uh, roll because it has a little flat place on it. This lemon is filled with natural strength lemon juice, just like the bottle. And now real lemon has this special label, a silver anniversary flower seed offer, a dollar forty-five cent value, yours for any real label lemon and twenty-five cents. Send your label and quarter to Real Lemon, Box 6830, Philadelphia 32, Pennsylvania. Be sure to use that address. Don't send it to Chicago because that only delays the mailing. It's Box 6830, Philadelphia 32, Pennsylvania. And yep. you should, you and should send in a Real Label Lemon, like you said, right? Oh, did I say Real Label Lemon? Yeah. Oh, well, get Real Lemon reconstituted lemon juice at your grocer's tomorrow. Send in a Real Label Lemon. And Shelly Berman, do you have anything that... Uh, Oh, you might do for us in the way of entertainment at this time. <laughs> I'm going to do a, you mean, I'm going to do a dance, bye. but I... Now get laughs? Bye, bye. Now, Shelly. Oh, right. good I mean, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, this will be an experiment. This is sort of like, you know, cracking a joke at some, you know, at a, at a wake. Uh, I feel, you know, I, if, I, if, I, if I try to be funny, will you not think I'm being facetious? Okay? Let's assume that they can get him back. All right. No. All right. Now go ahead. I'm going to stand up and and, and uh, uh, do a, a little thing. Can I stand, you over stand here? Yeah, sure. There. Uh, right over here. Excellent. I don't know how many of you have had the pleasure, the thrill, the honest to goodness excitement of reading F. Scott Fitzgerald. I know I haven't. <laughs> and it makes it difficult for me to speak of him. However, F. Scott Fitzgerald did create a kind of interesting type gangster, a well-dressed type gangster with striped suits which were worth approximately $10,000, after which the gangster killed the tailor for reasons of his own. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking of a... I don't have a finish for this, and I don't have much of a beginning, but the middle is boring, and <laughs> we'll do this thing for you. A gangster under certain circumstances, and can you catch me from the head down to my knees? Swell, yeah. not too far. Back up just a bit. Yeah, all right, swell. Uh, not, now, a gangster wearing one of his $10,000 suits and under certain circumstances. All right, Joe. You asked for it, and you're going to get it. And you know why you're going to get it? Because you asked for it. <laughs> you take one step toward me, and Roscoe here is going to fill you full of lead. Took a step, eh? <laughs> All right, Joe. I warned you that if you took that step, I was going to give it to you, didn't I? Nevertheless, in spite of everything that I said, <laughs> you went right ahead and you took that step, didn't you? <laughs> I gave you every chance, didn't I? I told you that if you stepped, you would get it, didn't I? Tell you what I'm going to do for you, Joe. I'll give you one more step. Oh, boy, do you want to die. All right. All right, Joe. You're really going to get it. Pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, Orson Bean Orson will make an enormous yes. tree out of tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> I can make the Hanging Gardens of Babylon out of tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll tell a shaggy dog story, may I? Good. Shall I go stand in Shelley's spot? Stand over there. Right. as well. This is just a small thing, too. That's copying out ahead of time. 
It's a little shaggy dog story. And the shaggy dog story, you see, as a form of humor, is neglected. People look down on shaggy dog stories because in order to, to uh, appreciate a shaggy dog story, you must picture it. And uh, that's very difficult to do. Here is the shaggy dog story that I want you to picture. I want you to picture a swamp in the heart of darkest Africa, stuck off in the jungle and undiscovered, uninhabited, except by some animals and things. And then I want you to picture a hot day in the middle of August. Oh, a miserable hot day. It's about 114 in the shade, and nobody in the swamp is doing anything. The gibbons are dropping in their tracks. The kakabura birds are flying off in another part of the jungle. It's hot, it's dank, it's miserable. The snakes are hanging straight down. <laughs> Not so much the heat, it's the humidity. <laughs> Even that most loathsome of creatures, the gaboon viper, so-called because he bites you in the gaboon. <laughs> Even this most hated reptile is blanching visibly. Late in the day, it's about 136, and there stand in the middle of the swamp two hippopotami up to here. <laughs> the first hippopotamus slowly turns around, and he looks at the second hippopotamus, and he says to the second hippopotamus, Somehow, I just can't get it into my head that today is Sunday. <laughs> you know, since uh, my lot in life seems to be to deliver commercial messages, I, I might have time to relate the first commercial I ever saw on television my wife and I had bought a television set. We lived in Chicago, and uh, we tuned in a dramatic presentation that was being uh, put on at the only station that was on the air at the, uh, then, an experimental station. I think we had one of the few sets that wasn't in a bar at the time. There were about 400 sets in Chicago. And they had hired an actor to do this. It, 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 was, not an, it was an actor-type commercial. And he was supposed to be an owner of a hardware store, and the, place, the thing was sponsored by a set of an outfit that made pots and pans and, uh, and pressure cookers and that kind of thing. I guess I'd better stand up in the face. <laughs> yeah, because he had, he had uh, a counter in front of him and shelves behind him, and it was loaded with pots and pans. And he came on staring straight ahead like they did in those days and with this big smile, and he said, All right, friends, we'll be back with the show in just a minute, but right now I'd like to show you what uh, our sponsor has for you in the way of a pressure cooker. This pressure cooker, this... Oh, this... Uh, now the, instead, there's a stack of saucepans here. There's no pressure cooker. <laughs> yeah. And a stack of saucepans, so he figured it must be somewhere under the counter, and he disappeared momentarily down here, and he couldn't find it, and he went back to the shelf, and there's all kinds of things. There's large kettles, and there's small saucepans, and there's everything but the pressure cooker. And he says, let me tell you about these saucepans. <laughs> these saucepans, and he goes into that a bit, and then you can see him off the side, and he says, these saucepans are... I want to tell you about this pressure cooker. <laughs> and he goes back to looking for it. And finally they gave up, and the camera swung away from him. This actually happened. Swung away from him onto a big sign that was, that was jiggling, rather, that had a price for the pressure cooker. And he had given up, meanwhile, and, and his voice, not on camera, said, Now what the hell caused that? <laughs> well, that was the commercial, you know. And since then we've had commercials like that here. <laughs> hope having done that, that I don't make this into the same thing, but we do have a little commercial for you at this time. Why put up with a nagging backache when it may be caused by nothing more than a soft, sagging mattress? This can happen. Get relief from morning backache by sleeping on a Sealy Posturepedic. We're going to go away for a moment and, uh, and come back. There are just a few minutes to go, and we haven't heard much from you because we've been yakking out oh, all the silly. time here. Uh, I, I know you don't feel too hot. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. You sang so beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute. that's left, there was just some speculation here a moment ago as to whether or not this particular show would be played, would be played on the air, and some people voiced the opinion that they thought it would not. 
to me, it would be so unthinkable. I, I can't imagine. I do not believe that N oh, if, yeah? if NBC yeah. abandoned this to the newspapers oh. and let the newspapers write it up, I would be very surprised. I do not think that will happen. Oh. I think that you, people, other than the few hundred nice people in this studio, will uh, will see the show that happened tonight. I sure hope. I sure hope you play it. Yeah, to play the show. Because there's a lot of things were said, you know. Yes. <laughs> Honey, you're right. Yeah. That's true. You are uh, going to be on the Perry Como show. Yes. Okay. What day? In the 16th of March with Bing Crosby. With Bing Crosby? With oh, the big three. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it will be finished. My leg will be completely finished. I will be walking such and a, everything. Such a, such a sensation to touch a girl's knee and feel oh, all that hard Oh, don't say that. Do the one. Look, do the one. Good. That's a French girl. That's why yeah. I married a French girl. Yeah. You married a French girl? Sure. sure. Oh, she's French. You're Elle est Parisien. Oh, it's for that you speak so beautiful French. Oh, yeah. You should meet her. She's very nice. Yes, you should. I have to talk to her, you know. Oh, so she speak English? Oh, she's she in Paris on peu d'anglais. She speaks perfect English. Was? Was gesagt? <laughs> <laughs> you have to progress, darling. He tries, but he has to progress. The, uh, your leg will be complete without, uh, you don't, won't have the thing yes. that you have uh, on. Yes, I go to Haiti tomorrow and uh, I will come back two weeks mm -hmm. and I will be... Chuk, chuk, chuk. It's getting stronger Walking. all the time. Yes, mm -hmm. that oh, horrible that's thing will be off. Oh, what a sensation. Don't do it, darling. <laughs> no, it's kind of different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is different. What, what is it? Is it just, a, just an iron thing that... Uh Oui, oh, it's no. horrible. It's, it's ugly. You probably don't need it now, but to be safe, you better do yes, it. Yes, exactly. exactly. She said, well, we're getting makeup. She said, she just doesn't have the confidence. She's that afraid. That is true, it's true. That I do in my apartment. I do walk now without nothing. In the time that remains, I, want to, I, I certainly want to express gratitude that Orson Bean and Genevieve and Shelley Berman were here tonight. You've all been wonderful. Thank you so much. Tune in again tomorrow night. And, and every night. Dad, Dad. Dad. During the taping of the Jack Parr program earlier this evening, Jack Parr walked off the show in protest against the deletion of one of his stories from last night's show. In the exercise of its proper responsibility to the public, NBC deleted this material last night because it considered it to be in bad taste. It is NBC's hope that Jack Parr will reconsider his action and return to the program.